everyone, welcome to the Rotor Grinders Morning Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. It's Tuesday. It's January 23rd. It is 2024. We have a five-game NBA slate to talk about here on today's podcast. Joined today by Timothy Buell. You all know him as Tasteful Tide. Sam, what's happening, my friend? Yeah, not much. Uh, probably going to have a pretty decent night in uh, DFS. Uh, played a little uh, Luke Kennard, who ended up only being like 7% owned, and he had a really strong game. Um, I had Embiid, who went for like 105 DraftKings points. So that, that helped out. And uh, so I'm going to have a pretty good night. Um, and I still got a lot of uh, hockey uh, hockey stuff going. So it's, uh, it's going to be a late night for me, watching some West Coast NHL. It was a early um, Embiid point prop kind of night. <laughs> no sweat necessary for that Embiid right. point prop. Uh, monster game from Joel. Guy that you know we talked about on the podcast quite a bit going up against San Antonio. We said if that game stays close, he's going to smash. Well, game stayed close and Embiid smashed. So, yeah. Oh, we, we have a really interesting five gamer here on tuesday let's jump in have some fun we got denver at indiana 242 and a half total in this one denver is a three-point favorite strother's out for denver and then halliburton jackson and numhart are all questionable for indiana we'll start here with denver five game slate a bunch of star power for a five game slate you know we have anthony davis no lebron we got sga that we'll talk about um but, you know, we start right off the bat here with Jokic going up against the Pacers. What do you like here for Denver? Yeah, I mean, Jokic is the clear and obvious answer. Um, we'll get to some other high-end studs that are in good spots also. But, I mean, this is really probably, I think, the most fantasy-friendly game on the entire slate. Um, Jokic has easily, easily, like, a 70, 80 90 point ceiling even in this matchup i mean really so at 11 2 um there's our there's already pretty strong value on the slate so i don't think the 11 2 price tag is going to be enough to like people people away so yeah like he's going to be the priority spend as far as i'm concerned um jamal murray um i think is also in a fantastic spot at 8400 um this game has a very uh pretty tight you know pretty tight spread so um i think you could get away with playing two nuggets um it's really the indie side that has me kind of um confused i guess not really sure what to do hard to know right now like if hal Burton were to miss what and if nembard were to miss uh do we go back to tj mcconnell at 5500 um i I think we do. Um, I also think uh, Pascal Siakam has a little bit of GBP appeal at 7,800. All right, don't get ahead of yourself. Let's go back to Denver here. Um, okay. <laughs> just, you know, for me on Denver, one thing that I've been tacking, like, uh, the Pacers with this season is, like, wing players that can score. And Michael Porter Jr. is that type of guy. So I think this is a really good spot for Michael Porter Jr. He put up 50 fantasy points, scored 25 actual points against the Pacers when they met earlier this season. As much as I like Jokic, I think that Michael Porter Jr. might be a cheaper option. Jamal Murray, he has that 50-plus point upside, but I think I, this is a spot I want to play Michael Porter Jr. or like an Aaron Gordon um, or Jokic. So going to the Pacers side, like you said, I, I think like Siakam, Kind of first game with his new team. The role was a little bit interesting. Um, first couple of games, right? He's played two games now with them. So waiting to kind of see him and what's going to happen with him. But we, we've seen Miles Turner, big game against Portland, really struggled against Phoenix last time out. McConnell's minutes disappeared. They have gotten like Ben Shepard some minutes. I want Halliburton to play in this game because it just mm -hmm. eliminates – all the question marks here, you know, Halliburton played against Portland, ended up playing 35 minutes in that game. So if McConnell, I mean, if, if, if Halliburton plays or sits, maybe you go back to McConnell, but it, it really, for me on the Pacers here, it's going to be Halliburton. If he plays under 10 K and then potentially taking some shots on Siakam or, or miles Turner here. I do like that Miles Turner call quite a bit. 6,400 seems a little bit 
uh, too cheap for him. So I, I definitely agree with that Turner call. Yeah, and we kind of want to see what happens with Jackson and Numhard. You know, if Jackson's out, it doesn't matter as much anymore with Siakam. Numhard matters only if Halliburton sits. So watching a little bit of news in this one, but nothing too crazy. Moving on to the Knicks at the Nets, two twenty-three and a half total here. New York's a four-point favorite. Mitch Rob's still out. Hartenstein questionable. Sharp and Simmons remain out for Brooklyn. Let's go New York first. If Hartenstein sits with with Mitch Rob already out, like, do we fire up <laughs> Jericho Sims here? Like, I mean, who's going to get the minutes at the five? Yeah, I would assume that it would be Sims. Um, Say again, Precious. I, I he played twenty five minutes the other night, so maybe Precious. Yeah, yeah. I would assume it would be one of Sims or Precious. Um, I think it that it would be Precious. That's just kind of my lean, but I could be way off. Um, I'm hoping it's Precious because he's also power forward eligible, so I wouldn't have to waste the center spot on 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 him. So, but yeah. Um, However, if Hartenstein plays, I absolutely love him in the spot, and I absolutely love his rebound prop. So um, I'm I'm already bet Hartenstein's uh, over eleven and a half uh, rebounds on DraftKings. It's minus one thirty five. You can also do uh, his alt rebounds at uh, twelve and a half at plus one hundred five. Um, and if he doesn't play, your bet's voided, so it's no big deal. Um, so. He's uh he's definitely gonna be a prop play for me. Um, for DK purposes at sixty five hundred, if he does play, I still think he's got plenty of ceiling. Um, so I think he's I think he's a good play. But really, the, the guy who's way too cheap, in my opinion, is Jalen Brunson. Uh, despite the fact that this game has the lowest total on the board, I mean Brunson's just been. I mean he's really taking over the steam. He's he's got sixty uh, DK point ceiling. Uh, he's under 9K. Um, I really think that he can uh, take it to this net squad. Yeah, so, I mean, Hartenstein sits. Precious would be one of my favorite value plays on the slate. So, I mean, just kind of looking through it and looking at their recent like, game flows, I would have a ton of interest in him. Um, I do have a ton of interest in Brunson as well. He's just someone that like has that 60 point upside in any matchup. So I, I don't mind taking shots on him. I think Julius Randle has upside in this matchup as well, especially if Hartenstein sits. So a lot yeah. of potential yeah. here, depending on like Hartenstein. Like, you know, right. you would have said, oh, a week ago, like, or a month ago, or two months ago, Hartenstein, he makes that much of a difference. Well, yeah, I mean, this guy has been playing really good basketball. He makes a huge difference for this team, um, whether they're, who's in and out in this one. So, kind of watching the news on the Knicks and then on the Brooklyn side of this one I don't mind Claxton in this spot it's a it's a pretty okay spot for Claxton Brooklyn is rotations have been all over the place outside of Claxton and Bridges and like they really haven't shown too much ceiling lately so just a, a weird spot here on the Brooklyn side yeah, you kind of said the word that I wanted to say, and, and that's ceiling. I don't see much of a ceiling for this Brooklyn team. Yeah, like individually, you know, Bridges at 7,500, Clax Claxton at 68, they're they're fine. I just don't think they have a ceiling. Uh, the uh, Knicks were kind of struggling defensively a little bit, you know, you know, like a month ago, but now they are seventh best in defensive rating. So, I mean, this is still a pretty strong defensive team. I just, I really do not have very much interest in Brooklyn at all. All right. Portland at OKC, 235 total in this game. The Thunder, 15 point favorite. Brown, Sharp, and Williams out for Portland. Let's start with that Portland team. You know, Brown, Williams don't matter. Sharp matters a little bit. You know, he's a pretty decent usage player. Any interest here in Portland going up against the Thunder? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like Malcolm Brogdon, uh, maybe at 6,500, um, Anthony Simons at 73, uh, this game though, just has such huge blowout risk. And I just don't know what to do with this Portland team. Um, you know, they lost by 24 to the Lakers. I guess Brogdon still got 33 minutes in that game. 
uh, which would be fine at, you know, 6,500. But, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of tough. And then si- Simon's got 30 minutes against the Lakers. Um, so, I mean, I guess they're still playing the in a blowout um but boy this is this is a really really tough matchup for them but the only two guys that i would play from portland would be simons or brogdon yeah i i don't hate um deandre eaton in this spot you know when he returned he played 30 minutes against the pacers the other night against the lakers they were just getting blown out in that game so if you think that game stays remotely close taking some shots on Aiton, but it's more of just a price thing for me on Aiton. yeah i don't i don't really have a ton of interest in portland in general here, maybe some Brogdon at 6,500 because he has some upside. Again, if the game stays close, if you're playing SGA, I think that's where you look at like Brogdon or, or Simons running it back and hoping that the game stays competitive. But I, I think, I think if you play SGA, you should play Aiton really. Yeah. Because yeah, I, Aiton, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I think Aiton only stays in the game if it's somewhat close. So um, but yeah, you could play any of those three guys if you play SGA, but I would certainly take take a hard look at Aiton uh, if I play SGA. Uh, as far as the Thunder are concerned, I mean, SGA, one of the top plays on the entire slate upside wise. Um, I don't mind this spot for Holmgren either, which is a little bit cheaper. His upside's been a little bit capped here recently. Jalen Williams has been playing really good. One of the reasons that Holmgren's upside has been capped is like Jalen Williams has been really balling out here recently. What do you like here on the Thunder side? Yeah, I mean, SGA is way too cheap at 10K. In this matchup, he should be like 10, 8, even close to like 11,000. So, I mean, yeah, SGA is definitely a top play on the slate. Uh, Do I like him more than Jokic? No, Um, but... Um, maybe possibly, you know, we can play both of those guys. Um, I think Holgram's fine. I think that price is certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's okay. It's a little bit high, but not horrible. Uh, Jalen Williams has been fantastic this year at 6,700. So th- those big three right there, um, certainly you can uh, mix and match in your GPP pool. Uh, but SGA is certainly the priority. Yeah, I think SGA, just so much upside in any matchup right now. If you do think this game gets out of hand, you could potentially play some bench guys like Wallace or maybe even take some shots on like Lou Dort if the game gets out of hand because they're cheap and it is a five-game slate. Utah at New Orleans, 238.5 total in this one. New Orleans, a a 6.5-point favorite. Utah is good to go. Ryan's still out for New Orleans, but two teams pretty much full strength here. Should be a good competitive basketball game with a high total. This game and the Indiana game, I think, are your two games you're going to attack very much on this slate uh, as far as just upside. What do we like on the Utah side here? Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind, uh, Colin Sexton at 6,200. He probably is the first guy that sticks out to me. Um, uh, Lori marketing at 81, um, not the best matchup for marketing, but I think that'll keep his ownership, uh, pretty, pretty low. Uh, I'm really waiting for Kessler to, uh, maybe get some more minutes. Um, but he did play 32 in his last game. So if they keep doing that, uh 5k is like an absolute steal so um you know it's probably uh sexton marketing kessler um you can always take shots on jordan clarkson because he has a massive ceiling Uh, a lot of people don't don't like to play him coming off the bench um but yeah uh, he would be number four for me yeah, I mean, Chris Dunn randomly got a bunch of run the other night and almost had a triple-double. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we necessarily want to expect that most nights. Yeah. I like the Kessler call. Sexton's one of my favorite plays on the slate. And anybody that's ever listened to the podcast before knows that I think marketing is in play regardless of the matchup on any given night. So always interested in marketing. Going to the New Orleans side here, I think Brandon Ingram is too cheap. Uh, I think Brandon Ingram is a guy that should be over 8K. I think he's got a huge price decrease for I don't know the reasons. I mean, this is a guy that just put up 60 fantasy points the other day. So I think B.I. very much in play. Zion always in play. And I mean, McCollum is someone that has upside as well. So I think that New Orleans is going to be one of the top teams I target on this slate. 
It's going to be really interesting to see what people do with this kind of mid-range uh, uh, game because, like you said, Ingram is way too cheap. Zion is too cheap. I think McCollum is too cheap. Uh, but we also want to jam in these studs. We still have the game that we've yet to talk about with the uh, Lakers Clippers that have tons of studs in it. We got LeBron who's out. So, like, how people go about line of construction, you know, going balanced with this Utah Pelicans game, or do they go stars and scrubs with like, you know, uh, Jokic, AD, or Jokic and um, uh, Shea, uh, and then some scrubs. So um, if this is going to be the lower end of how people build in terms of ownership, that I love getting to a game stack of this Utah Pelicans game. Yeah, I mean, I again, I just I really like the Pelican side in this one, and I think that like the fact that we have the ten o'clock game on the slate for this one, and like it's a two hour gap, but it's yeah. one of the best games on the slate as well. Like, there's going to be a lot of ownership in the in the LA game here. Oh yeah, and we already have the news. We yeah. already have the news, so it's not like we're like really waiting on anything, you know, like we normally would be. Let's get into it. We got Lakers and Clippers in LA. Shocker, right? Uh, 231 total in this one. The Clippers, an eight and a half point favorite. LeBron and Vincent out for the Lakers. Zubac out for the Clippers. Uh, let's talk Lakers here first. No LeBron James. I mean, this is a, a, a recipe we can look at now for the last couple seasons and kind of see how this team performs with LeBron off the floor and it's AD. I mean, it's AD doing his thing. He's averaging one, excuse me, 1.52 fantasy points per minute. D'Angelo Russell is averaging 1.27 fantasy points per minute. He's been really good with LeBron off the floor this season. So I think that's, I mean, I think Russell is one of your first pieces in on this slate, whether or not you're playing AD or not. Russell's too cheap yeah. with LeBron off. Yeah. Yeah, Ru Russell's uh, usage goes up higher than I think anyone else is on the team um, when LeBron is out. But my question to you, Stevie, is, is it AD or is it SGA that you prioritize as your second stop? Oh, I would with, prefer AD. With Yoke. With Yoke. Okay. So we, we think that uh, SGA is going to get sque squeezed then, right? I mean, between Jokic and AD. Um, I don't think my I first think... stud is Jokic, by the way, either, for what it's worth. Oh, oh, it's not. Who is your first stud? I think AD? my first stud is AD. Like, I, okay. I think he's the top play on the slate. And then, like, I think you run it back with one of Kawhi, George, or Harden on the other side of this game. So you're so you want to go more balanced. You don't want to go double stud. I'm very it. much interested in Michael Porter Jr. from Denver. So I think that's okay. where I'm going to plant my flag on Jokic is just playing Michael Porter Jr. over Jokic today. Yeah, see, I I want to find a way to play Jokic and AD, but that might not be possible. So we'll see. It might be tough. Um, it's a five game slate. I mean, Indiana news, Hartenstein news, like there's enough right. news that we're waiting on, but I mean, and like anybody can get ruled out day of, but as of right, right now, like I think AD is the guy you prioritize. Like 1.54 fantasy points per minute. The the Clippers don't have like a, a true center to kind of slow him down. Like I mean Daniel no, Tice don't. and Mason Plumley are not going to slow AD I, down. Sorry, I, I was going to ask you about the Tice uh, Plumley situation. Like, how many minutes can we give those two? Because I think Plumley uh, is uh, still like a, on a minutes kind of restriction and only plays like fifteen a game. He's played twenty eight minutes recently, though. Oh, Plum oh Plumley has okay. Yeah, I thought he hadn't. So, All right, but as far as the Lakers are concerned, for me, AD. Russell Reeves, another guy that kind of benefits from LeBron being off the floor is Austin Reeves. So I like those guys. I think I'd take shots on Vanderbilt before Vanderbilt or Hachimura before I'd play Cam Reddish. Um, they oh, definitely. they yeah. seem to really like Hachimura and he's 3,700. He could be a good value play. Um, Vanderbilt's minutes are all over the place. We haven't really seen him without LeBron. So uh, potentially taking a shot on one of those cheap plays with LeBron out, pairing them with Russell or AD or both. I mean, I think you could play three Lakers on this slate and be okay. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And and can you play 
can you play Tice and or Plumley as a run back with with like a George? And I don't or, think I would. Or Harden? No, you won't. Okay. No, I don't think I would just because like their rotation is just so un- unpredictable. Like I think the yeah. only three the only three Clippers I would play are Kawhi, George, or Harden. Um, yeah, maybe Westbrook in large field tournaments. Mm-hmm. What do you like here for the Clippers? Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you that um, it's probably going to have to be one, one of uh, Leonard or George or Harden. I probably lean with Harden because I would assume I want a little bit of a run back with Harden and Russell. Um, Harden's definitely got triple double upside. Uh, he's also the cheapest of the three, so I think I'd lean uh, Harden as my favorite out of the big three of the Clippers. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else from here. Like I said, maybe Westbrook in large field tournaments, his minutes are very random. And when he's on the floor, he's either really aggressive or he takes the night off. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to Russell Westbrook right now. Um, so it's just really hard to trust anything that he's doing. As far as like the cheap plays, they just play their big three so many minutes that it's really hard to trust anything else on this team outside of those three guys. If anybody, it'd be probably Norman Powell, but Terrence Mann at 3,900, he could get you like 20, 24 here. I don't necessarily hate him if we don't get a ton of value open up throughout the day. Yep. All right, let's play the morning grind game, and then uh, we'll get out of here. Fun slate. Very interesting slate. Uh, the Halliburton news matters so much on this slate because of yep. the non-value that we have right now. Yeah, very much uh. so. Fair play under 5K to go 7X. Who do you got? Uh, I will go with uh, Rui. Oh, you took my guy. Um, uh, really? I- I'll go. I'll go. Precious, hoping yeah. that heart sign sits. Yep. Yeah, I like catch him more a lot with LeBron off the floor. Over 8K to go under 5X. Who's your bust today? I will go... Mm, I'm going to go Randall. All right. I'm going to go Paul George. I think it's a Kawhi day. I think Kawhi has a big game. Or Harden. Those are I, I would rank them Kawhi, Harden, Paul George today. Favorite six X play. Um, I will go with. I'm going to go with Jokic. I mean, I could easily say AD, but I'm going to go Colin Sexton. I have a ton of interest in Sexton today. Let's get weird. JPP play of the day. Who do you got for us today? Hmm. Do we think? Um. Actually, no. I'm gonna go DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, I, think I don't he'll, think he'll be. I think I don't think he'll on. be pop. Yeah, I don't think he'll be popular. I'm gonna go with Michael Porter Jr. I have a ton of my interest in Michael Porter Jr. today. I've talked about it quite a bit already, but I love this spot for him. So yeah, Michael Porter Jr. is who I'm looking at here. Uh, let's go to the betting portion of the morning grind game. Any props or pick 'em plays that you like for this one? Yeah, so I already bet the Isaiah Hartenstein over 11 and a half rebounds. It's minus 135 on DK. Um, I, I also kind of like the alt rebounds at 12 and a half over plus 105 on DK. So that's all I've done so far. Yeah, like that. Um, so I was already, I was looking at this already, but I like this line. So I like D'Angelo Russell over 19 and a half points. Uh, this is going to be my one today. He is mm. averaging 22.4 points per 36 minutes with LeBron off the floor this season. So gets a huge I- increase in usage, 3.8%, which is the highest of everybody. So I, AD's line is already very much priced with LeBron out. So I'm going to go to D'Angelo Russell over 19 and a half points on this one. Like I said, I think this is a good line to take advantage of. 80s is right where it probably should be here. Um, and then there's not a Hatcher Moral lineup. I was kind of hoping for that, but nothing else for that. 
Uh, any lines standing out to you? Money lines, over unders, any of that stuff? Um, actually, I kind of I was looking at the Knicks minus four, but I haven't officially bet it. But I I might. Um, but that's my favorite line as of right now. Yeah, I don't mind that lean. Um, I don't mind that lean at all. Nothing really jumping off the page to me. If anything, I think I would take the over in the New Orleans Utah game. Utah's been playing really good. New Orleans has been playing really good. If anything, I'd take that. But again, I don't have a strong lean for um, a, a spread bet or an over under bet today. So nothing I bet. I, I have bet the uh, D'Angelo Russell line, though. Yeah. Tim, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No. Uh, thanks as always, TV, and uh, good luck, everybody. I'm going to go watch some Hawks and Kings and hopefully DeJounte Murray can finish off a, a very upsetting and terrible betting night. Um, uh, you, you said, you said <laughs> Kings, you said Kings. And I thought of the LA Kings cause that's mm. who I'm going to be watching. So no. <laughs> if you would have yeah. told me that the Charlotte Minnesota game was 128, 125 and Rudy Gobert did not hit his rebound prop. I would have told you you were crazy this morning. So um, that was that, like, just absolutely disappointing on Gobert's part, um, rebounding wise. But hope everyone has a fantastic Tuesday. We're back Wednesday talking hoops. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you then.